So let's go a little bit scientific, psychological with this video with regards to manifestation and how it's working. In fact, no matter what angle you come at it, whether you're coming at it from a spiritual perspective, a religious perspective, a scientific perspective, you'll notice that all different avenues have discussed manifestation in some shape or form. They just have different terminology for it, but no one discounts it as being an actual phenomenon. You know, in science it's discussed as the placebo effect, that belief that you are taking something that heals you and you end up getting healed, even though it's just a sugar pill, it's that strong belief in it spirituality discusses it as manifestation. The CIA have proven it and talked about it as patterning and religion calls it prayer. So wherever angle you come at, no one says, no one discounts it as an actual phenomenon, but we're going to come into it from psychology. I did touch upon it in a previous video and I did promise that I would go into it in more detail in this one about the reticular activa activating system, our confirmation bias, what's happening in your world, what's potentially keeping you stuck. How do you make what is currently invisible in your reality visible? Let's talk about it in this video. But first up, I just wanna thank you all for joining me. I'm Athena Raven and I'm a mental health and manifestation life coach here to empower you and inspire you. So if you are in Enjoying the content and finding it helpful and please do like and subscribe as it really really helps this channel to grow and I love and appreciate your support throughout this thank you for those of you who joined me on the live recently as well it was so much fun to have you there and I hope to see you all there soon as well so with regards to the reticular activating system well let me give you a example of a client of mine from many years back and he was married to his partner and they got pregnant. Now, he was always frequenting this coffee shop with his friend. He said it was a place that he'd been going to for years. He'd always went, just go, enjoying himself, catching up with friends, business partners, whatnot. And since, he, since his partner became pregnant, his concept of himself shifted. He was becoming a father and everything that goes along with becoming a father. Any of you who are parents will know, suddenly your whole world changes as soon as you've got that confirmation that you are pregnant, that you are expecting. Suddenly it's like, right, okay, the mindset now, we've got to change how we act. I need to grow up and mature a bit. I need to get the place prepared. And this mindset completely shifts your world. Your whole world is about to change for the better, depending how you look at it. <laughs> And so that's what happened to him. And suddenly he said how everywhere he went, he was noticing people who were pregnant, people with push chairs, couples with babies. He started seeing them everywhere. And this particular coffee shop that he was frequenting for so many years, he sat there one day with a friend of his and he noticed that there was a crash, actually in plain view as well, but he never noticed it before. It was invisible to him. And now he's noticed that his favorite coffee shop actually have a play crash area for children. How handy is that? But of course, before his reticular activating system had filtered it out and it was made invisible to him and he didn't know it existed until he occupied the state of becoming a father. He's going to have a baby of his own. Now suddenly this information is relevant. Now suddenly what was once invisible becomes visible. And this is how it works. All of you have experienced your reticular activating system at work, your confirmation bias, which is there essentially to filter out the information that it deems unimportant and filter in the information that it thinks is important to you based on your focus and attention, based on your identity, what you identify as. Sound familiar? Manifestation again. So you're bringing to light something that was in the dark in your world. And the reason this happens is because we live in a multifaceted dimensional reality, multiverse. And you've heard this, that everything Everything is in existence now. Although at the moment it might currently be in the form of wave and we maybe can't physically see it with our five senses, it's still in existence. Quantum theory, observer theory. As soon as you observe something, you become it. You put your focus and attention on that goal. Suddenly it collapses, becomes a solid matter 
that you can experience in your 3D reality, but that potential was always in existence. Like that crash was always in existence, but it wasn't important to him, so a reticular activating system filtered it out. Because of how multifaceted this world is, because of the multi-dimension, because there's so much information going on around us, it's all present now. But can you imagine if we could experience it all in the here and now? Our human avatar that we've taken on, consciousness has created this avatar and has given it various labels, given you a name, given you an age, given you an occupation, all the kinds of things that you are identifying with and shaping yourself into, given yourself phobias and fears, given yourself passions and fetishes and whatever to shape you into the person you are with these personality traits and you're having um, a particular experience of life based on how you shape to this avatar of yourself and that's why as a self-concept it can change any time as soon as you put your attention and focus on something else as soon as you shift your state of being as soon as you become consciously aware of something else then your world does start to look very different because these limited five senses that you have in this limited body, this limited meat suit, can only take in a tiny, tiny fraction of reality of what is going on around us. That's why so many times actually I'll go on walks or I'll go on a I'll go and watch a movie with a friend of mine. And sometimes I would think to myself, it's like we watched a different movie. I'll pick up on things that they didn't pick up on, they didn't notice, and vice versa, and we'll attach different meanings to it. And we end up having a very different experience. Ah, oh, you know, I love the movie. Ah, oh, they hated it. It triggered them in some sense, brought back old memories. And really, we're living in concert. We're living in the same planet and having well, the same kind of reality, but actually we're seeing it, perceiving it and experiencing it very, very differently, depending on the individual and how you shaped your concept of self. And it is important to have these limitations of these five senses so we can be more focused and experience that one portion of reality. And if we don't like what we're experiencing, then we change it. We change our concept of self so that then we can make what is currently invisible to us visible. Many's, many's the time with my clients actually. And I always say to them, I don't expect them to be able to do this by themselves. God knows, I, with all my years of experience and understanding of this, I will struggle to do it by myself as well. That is, try and shift your perspective on things that are happening. When unfavorable things are happening, for example, with their specific person, like I'm being ghosted, I've been blocked, or it's taken them ages to get in touch with me. They were hot and now they're cold. And we tend to, when we're still in a, a lax state, when we're still feeling insecure and uneasy about our specific person manifestation, we will inadvertently, because we're in lack, we will seek out more of the lack. Your reticular activating system, your confirmation bias, will seek out all of the times when you were rejected, when you were pushed aside, when they treated you badly, when they were being cold to you, rather than focusing on everything that is working in your favor, seeing everything that is working out for you. And it's amazing that sometimes when I'm with my clients, the shift in their mood, I take them out of the state and I put them in a new one. And they not only start to see the alternative based on what I'm giving to them, I'm giving them an objective viewpoint, they're shifting state as a result of that, and then suddenly what was invisible to them becomes visible, and all of these memories come to the forefront of actually they said this, and actually we did that. Do you know that I've actually had clients before who have had amazing, incredible movement with their specific person, i.e. before they saw me they had very, very minimal contact, if any. And then they end up, contact increases or becomes affectionate, in some cases, even to the point of going on a date with SP. And then for whatever reason, if I don't see them regularly enough, if they fall back out of state, then they fall back into, right, let's filter out, confirmation bias starts to filter out all of this good stuff that was happening, let's focus on all the lack and all the stuff that isn't working, inadvertently bringing more of that into my reality, into my existence. And I have to say to them, did you forget <laughs> that SP took you, did you forget that your specific person said all this stuff to you, that you had this movie, did you forget all this good stuff? And they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> 
And it's really incredible to watch, but I love so much. My biggest passion in this role is seeing people's expression change. And those of you who have coached with me will know, and do feel free to comment below as well your experience, how your mood and everything shifts and changes. And then suddenly they end up, what they ended up with, i.e. a limiting belief. It's like we're against each other. They're, they're, they're fighting to keep that limiting belief. I'm hammering in some truths, some facts, and some alternative perspective. And it gets to a point their mind can't fight it anymore. They end up coming over to my side and they end up stating, oh, and actually, and they start fighting their own limiting beliefs. It is the most satisfying thing. I always bring it to their attention. It's absolutely brilliant when it happens. Not to mention, just, just hilarious. I love it. And we have the most fun with that. It's nothing better than battering those limiting beliefs down and freeing yourself up from it. But when we do that, suddenly all the stuff that was wiped from their mind because it was deemed unimportant. All of the stuff that was happening in their 3D that was made invisible is suddenly made visible and everything changes and shifts. But of course, when you are occupying a state, in the interim, it is difficult to see the alternative because you are, you're currently in that state. You're in Spain, for example. So you're just going to see everything that is Spanish and you're going to experience everything that is Spanish and it's going to be hard for you to see out of that state to see further than Spain and I have to physically take you out and put you in Greece and then you get a different perspective you get different views you have a different experience you have a different mood with that and the whole world changes but of course the states are infinite and we can fall in and out of them at any time and so this is where it's so important to be self-aware and focused because that particular activating system is functioning constantly if you're there stating things like it's not working they're ghosting me i still haven't received a message yet guess what you're going to see more of you're going to see more of the evidence that it's not working for you that's why a lot of the times when you shift state, you'll start to see these signs and synchronicities in relation to your manifestation. And I, like I say, I don't pay too much attention to external signs, but I have seen them. And many of the time I would use them to my advantage and I would just apply the meaning that it's working in my favor or that's a sign that it's coming together. I'll take that on board and it just further cements my faith. But that is my confirmation bias seeking out information to prove what I'm currently believing. If you believe, for example, that the world is shaped like a heart and I'm there telling you, well, actually it's shaped like a triangle. This is a really crazy example, you know. You're going to inadvertently see all the evidence that supports your belief that the world is shaped like a heart. That would be lovely, actually, heart-shaped world. And you will stick to that belief. What's it going to take for me to change your belief or for someone else to come in and change your belief, right? It's going to take a bit of work, some other evidence, some other stuff inserted, and you'll either accept it or reject it depending on various circumstances, on various influences. But once I give you enough evidence, if I give you more evidence to prove the contrary to what you believe, that the world is heart-shaped, and I'm telling you it's a different shape, You'll be looking at it and you'll then almost have no choice but to accept the new belief. You see, many of us have beliefs about ourselves that came from childhood and they're not even real. They're not even factual. They're not set in stone. If you believe that the world is heart shaped, then you're correct because in your world, your reticular activating system is going to filter in as much evidence as it possibly can to prove that to you. And other people might think you crazy for thinking that, but in your world, you are right. Because of how this works, because of your confirmation bias, confirming to you what you believe. So when you're looking at it in terms of your SP, what do you believe about your situation, about your desire, about yourself and yourself in relation to them and how they're treating you? What are your beliefs? Where's your attention and focus? Ask yourself, because you're Mind is filtering out all the good stuff right now if you're in a state of lack and it's just filtering in the crap. <laughs> and we don't want that. <laughs> so that's why it's so important to keep on top of this. I really hope that this clarified a few things for you and coming at it from a, a different perspective as well. And I'm sending you guys loads of love. I'll see you in the next video.